Hey folks, Damien from Southpaw Designs and check this out. Just got finished with this fun little project that uh, I saw uh, an example of online. So I decided to design it in uh, VCar Pro and see if I can get this bad boy up and going. So uh, today you're gonna learn how to create this from start to finish. And also just because I love you guys so much, I'm gonna put these design files on my website for free. So you can download these for free. I do encourage you to watch all the way through because uh, there are several things that you will need to know about how you're gonna design and put it together in terms of the proportions and in terms of uh, the width and uh, just some design aspects that will help you do a better job in making one of these. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. And if you end up making it, I'd love for you guys to shoot me an email with pictures of uh, your results and your modifications and uh, your success stories. So let's go ahead and dig right in. So to begin with, we're going to uh, plane the wood that we're going to use for our brackets. And guess what this wood is? It's pine, but I just got it from a couple of fence pickets. Turns out if you're looking for thin, cheap wood, fence pickets uh, are a good way to go. Once we have our wood planed and down, I'm going to cut out the brackets. We'll need 10 of them. Uh, for something as small as this, I typically like to use the CA glue and tape or double-sided tape method uh, so they'll hold on to the board. And once we have uh, those taken care of, now we're going to start cutting out our plug covers, which actually I won't use, but we'll look more, about, more at that a little bit later. Now, I don't have a really uh, high-end uh, bandsaw, so I have to resaw with my table saw. Going to use the same method, CA glue and tape, because these are going to be cut out. Now, I will add tabs onto the bottom of them, um, but anything small like this, I usually like to use CA glue and tape so everything stays more secure. Once we have everything down and we've probed our CNC, the Onefinity is my CNC of choice. I use a Onefinity Woodworker X50. Uh, I, I won't show you all these. You get the idea. I'll speed through them and do some time lapse. There's going to be a pocket uh, and then we will cut out the plugs. Leave a little tab on there so they don't fly all over the place. Okay, once we have our 10 plug cutters, uh, I'll use my reciprocating saw to cut those out. We do need to take them over to the sander and sand those off to try to clean those up a little bit. Now, if you're doing this, be careful because uh, I tell you what, I've lost uh, some fingerprints trying to sand off these little bitty things. If you guys have a better method for sanding little bitty things like this, please let me know because I can't figure out a good way to do it other than hand sanding, which takes forever. From there, we're going to go ahead and plane down just a couple of 2x4s. I decided to uh, try pine 2x4s for, um, for my trays and they work just fine. Now, I don't know what your philosophy is on combining hardwood and softwood, walnut and pine, but the finished product actually looks pretty good. I should probably use something like maple or oak. Let me know what you would do. Now, these pockets are going to be cut to whatever um, width you need based on the size uh, jars that you're actually going to be using. I'll place a link down in the description for the jars that I'm using, um, just so you know. And if you download the uh, design files, those uh, match up with the jars that I'm using. Now, right here, I actually made kind of a mistake. I'll talk about it later, but I shouldn't have cut my uh, trays that close. I should have left a little bit more uh, space so I, I could actually put the plug covers on them. But you live and learn. It still looks good when all said and done. All right, once we have everything cut to length, I'll measure them up and take them to the table saw and cut them to width. We want to make sure that we have uh, the exact same size on both sides of those pockets so that we know it will uh, sit flat and won't tilt from one side to the other.
Once we have all five of them cut out, we will just do a quick little sanding there. Now I like to uh, sand uh, with uh, 120 and then raise the grain and then do another sanding to 220. All right, so now about those free design files, uh, I'm going to put them in the description below. It will be a link that takes you to my website. You will have to place an order, but it's a free order and it won't cost you anything. Uh, and it'll also ask you for an email and, and blah, 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 all that stuff because it's considered a purchase. Um, but I don't do any kind of marketing or anything like that. So you're never going to get an email from me or anything like that. Um, so, uh, that's where you're going to go to this, to download those free files. But one thing that I do want to ask of you guys, that's what I'm giving to you. What I ask you guys to do for me is hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and please, please watch the video till the end, because those four metrics really tell YouTube that this is valuable content and encourages them to keep on promoting the channel and promoting the video out there. So thank you all for everything and let's get back to it. Next, we need to cut our side pieces. Going to use some walnut here and go ahead and plane that down. I use the DeWalt 735. I just upgraded from the 734. I've actually got a video comparing the 735 and 734. And boy, I love that 735. There is a boatload of difference if you're ever uh, in the market. Now ignore the dust, I do have a substandard dust collection. Now these will be the sides. I should have put three pockets in them. One for the uh, crossbar and then two more at the bottom to hold the uh, design together. I have to fix that later on. But in the final design, I've actually put a couple more pockets down there. Once we're finished, we will take them off. And finally, the last step uh, is creating our wheels. Now, one of the reasons I'm giving away these design files for free is because you can take this basic design and do any number of things with it. You can change these designs. Uh, you can really decorate it up. Uh, you know, I really want to encourage you guys to do some crazy things with them, and I'd love to see them. So if you uh, create any of these, please feel free to uh, drop me a line on my website or, or comment on, on my channel. I'd love to see some of the uh, projects that you guys uh, come up with. And as always, I, I do get the question every once in a while, these design files, take them, make money with them. Just don't resell them. Uh, but anything that you make, um, you know, make some money off those. Next, we will actually do kind of a dry fit to put these together and get our spacing. Uh, I'm using some paste wax to help get those a little bit in tighter. Now, this, um, this axle that we're using does need to be pretty tight because you don't want the two wheels to be able to spin independently. They need to stay pretty stationary so that your uh, trays don't get cockeyed. Uh, I just realized that I put both of them on backwards. So now let's take them off and just flip them over and try that again because I'm a dumbass. Let's just do a little dry fit and see how everything works and it looks good. So next we need to line up our uh, brackets. And again, you want to make sure that the brackets are all evenly lined up so that way you can uh, glue them on or um, uh, nail them or use dowels or however you prefer to do it. But we want to make sure that they're nice and even so it will sit flat and doesn't uh, lean to one side or the other. I'm just going to use some tight bond too, and then use the little pistol grip clamps to hold that on there so they can dry. Now we'll let them dry. I set them all nice and pretty so I could look like a professional YouTuber. Ignore the orange one. I only have four. Now I'm going to measure and put the uh, last two pockets in there that I told you a minute ago I forgot about. And I'll just go to the drill press and do that at this point.
Okay, and we're going to need 10 dowels. I'm using half inch dowels. We're going to make each of them about an inch long. Um, those are going to be what holds the uh, trays in place. So I'm just going to cut 10 one inch marks and then go to the bandsaw and actually cut them off. Now you'll notice that I made these uh, pockets a little bit too big. I have corrected those in the uh, design. Um, I used half inch dowels, but I think I made those uh, pockets about 0.6. So I actually went back in and went a little bit deeper with half inch um, pockets further inside. So they do actually hold where they need to. Once they're dried, how's that for time lapse? Let's put everything together. Those dowels do need to line up. Now let's do a dry fit and see how everything goes. And we can always adjust them. I didn't glue up these, um, these wheels to the axle uh, because I don't feel that it really needs to. It, it holds pretty tight. I love using Odie's oil, so I'm putting some Odie's oil on here. I really think that it makes that... Um, that uh, walnut really stand out, makes it look gorgeous. It didn't do much for the pine, but the walnut, my gosh, Odie's Oil uh, does a great job. And no, they're not paying me. Once we have everything done, we need to put our final dowels in. Um, so this will actually hold our wheels in place. And that was probably the hardest part, getting all these together. And then we'll just let it dry overnight. Now, I did find that they did hang a little bit. They, they weren't quite as loose as I wanted them to be. And we'll talk about why that is here in just a second. But overall, it looks really good. So now, the final test. Let's put our spices in there. And this is where things kind of uh, go off the rails, and I see that I need to make a fix. Um, because the spice jars are so top-heavy, they don't hang the way they should. So my fix to that is uh, to cut all the way through using a Forstner bit and actually have the uh, jars actually hang in there, um, being held on by the lids. So I'll just jump back over to my drill press and cut all the way through. Now that sits the way I want to. So gravity should hold them flat once we put everything back together. Do a little sanding to clean them up, and I'll be honest, the bottom side of these uh, don't look great. Uh, there was some tear out, but the next one I make, uh, I'll do a pocket all the way through. Now the last problem we run into is now that we've dropped our jars, the sides aren't quite as tall as we need for them to be. So I'm going to make these um, sides about two inches taller and then simply reassemble. Everything moves a lot more freely. That wax really lets those wheels uh, go very smoothly. It's not a bad idea to wax up your dowels as well. The plug covers were intended to go over the dowels right here. However, I cut the trays too close to the uh, pockets right there. So if I were to try to put these plug covers on, they would get in the way of each one of uh, the uh, bottles. So they don't really work here. So if you want to use the plug covers, I think they'd look really cool. However, you need to make sure that your trays are a little bit wider so that you can actually fit them on the ends right there. And that looks gorgeous. The wife loves it, and a little Miss Gypsy approves as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching all the way through.